Hey ladies and gents, welcome to Zurich Auto Show. We're here for the fourth time in Switzerland checking out the new Opel Grandland second generation. This is the fully electric version. So without further ado, let's check it out. Here's the new Opel Grandland second generation. Now this is the fully electric version built on new Stellantis EV platform. Now we have a beautiful spec here. We have copper metallic color with piano black roof and we have also on the EV piano black side skirt arches and lip and the back of the bumper in piano black so the hybrid has it on painted black it's same as on the new Peugeot let's go a little bit closer check out the details of the design we have a new LED data running light signature with illuminated open badge on the front now since this is an EV it's more close on the front let's come closer so checking out the new data running lights you have the Lux, these are matrix pixel LED headlights. You have the fog light integrated in the main LED headlight cluster. So you can see the copper uh, metallic color in this case. We have piano black here. And at the bottom, again, EVs will have this in piano black. The hybrid will have unpainted black. Now here we have this kind of plus symbols or like a cross now this is illuminated because the uh, car across has full headlights on we can see here there is air intake only on this part there's a radar so their flaps inside are closed you can see them in there but they open up when they need air intake now another look at the front here we have this plexiglass piece connected in the middle and we have the new illuminated opal badge tell me in the comments how do you like this and then we're going to come in the rear you can also see the design elements inside so this outside is a plexiglass piece you cannot touch the edges there you can see 360 camera for parking and if we come to the front and check out the front end so gorgeous looking now you can see those elements here how they look they stand out Checking the car from this end. Now, let's check the alloys. We have diamond cut, silver on black. And let's see the dimension, 20 inch. So 235.50 R20. Michelin, these are uh, E-Primacy, good EV tire, low rolling resistance, gives you more range. You have big disc on the front and on the rear so there's no drum brakes on the rear now I have to say that this combo really looks great and kind of posh so checking the profile and I really do like the profile it's a very elegant now we have piano black side contrasting mirrors turn signals and here we have wide lens camera plus we should have a puddle light now on the top the roof is metallic black checking out the dash we have a heads-up display we have two speakers light sensor rain, rain sensor lane assist camera and we have you can see here heated windshield you can see the heating system in the glass itself like little heaters and well, it's just like a little threads so i believe you can see that uh, double laminated front windshield for better acoustics better soundproof and you can see here an optional panel roof. Now the hybrid that I filmed uh, right there didn't have the open lower roof. This is how it looks, tinted. You can see the black shark fin antenna and at the very end, part of the spoiler, there is a sport stoplight. Tinted windows on the back. And uh, just a look at the rear here. So on the rear we have 235.50 R20. Uh, I haven't remembered the front, but I'm sure you're gonna check that out. Here is the charge port. So we have AC type two and DC CCS to plug for fast charging or slow charging. So you can see here E. Now if we back up, uh, let me just find the right angle. We can see the beautiful back LED taillights. Now tell me in the comment section below, how do you like the opal leathers being illuminated not sure if I like it or not, but uh, I guess it's gonna sit in through time. We have sharp LED taillights. These small pieces are the turn signals. 
And here you can see the cat eyes now. The bumper looks sporty. Uh, piano black once again, so two strikes. Fog light in the middle, so the fuser is really discreet. And close up on the Opel LED lights on the back. Stoplight on the top, you can see, and here we have a stamp inside the fifth door, Grand Line signature. We have rear wide lens camera with a washer nozzle, and on the right side of the camera, you press to open the, in this case, powered tailgate. So the other one had it manual, this one's powered. That's that. I'm a 200 tall person or 6.6 .6 in feet. I'm gonna stand next to it so you can see the height comparison. Now we have cold LED license plate illumination. You can see here the opening button. And look at this, this is a nice detail. We have a shark here, so that's a cool touch. Uh, you can program the height and hold the closing button to program the height. If you have a lower garage, you can lower it. Now we have a shelf here. So this part goes up, this part is down. You can put a longer umbrella there or some things. You can take it off the shelf, have rubber stoppers here. And on the top, you have an emergency triangle. Now we have a very, very spacious cargo space. Uh, this is nice and flat here. Now we have hooks on both ends. There are small pockets on both ends as well. There are tether points all four sides. You have room here for a first aid. And underneath, now we can use these stoppers to hold that up now you can see here you have a patching kit and you have room for charging cables now i believe this looks very similar to the hybrid space wise but this area is covered here so that is a bit short but still uh, very spacious now let me just see if i can lower this perhaps down so you can see the patching kit type 2 for public charging stations. I'm just gonna lower it a little bit like that and let's see if this can fall down. Okay, yeah, you can use it same as in the hybrid. So you get an extra five fingers of height, maybe four, and if you count the thickness of that one. So uh, that's the extra depth here. So no, uh, no, no, not too many uh, compromise when it comes to EV uh, space-wise. You're not losing too much. Seats knocked down either 60 40 or 40 40 20. You can knock down that one. So, on the left here, as I mentioned, we have crochet hook on both ends. We have a total outlet and a cold uh, LED light. So, let's press to close. So, it's not too loud when it closes. So, beautiful looking. Now let's check the interior. Good opening and closing sound. The doors open nice and wide. You have good seals. You can hear push to lock if you have kids. And you can see the doors go all the way down so there won't be water residue there. Now let's check the interior because uh, it's different from the one I've filmed on the hybrid. Here we have a hard plastic, but then we have this nice smooth carbon fiber finish have a speaker here you can see it looks high quality finish another speaker there and also nice elements now here it's hard plastic hard plastic but then they padded this and this so this is artificial leather by now I believe and then we have the Alcantara so these are softly padded big handles uh, gray no piano black excellent and big pockets now since this is an EV this is a bit shallow but I think it's not too much of a difference. Uh, this is interesting, the, the seatbelt solution on this one. Now, textile, leather, again, probably vegan leather, perforation in the middle, white Alcantara, and then gray and white, or maybe kind of, yeah, contrast stitching, so looking nice and posh. We have these zippers for the uh, isofix, kind of hard to open though, and you can see the buckles. Now we have Alcantara on the top 
and Alcantara on the headrest. That's a nice detail there. Now, I can lower that one and I can pull here to show you the cargo room. But once again, very spacious. Now you can see the top here with the pan and roof. And uh, I haven't adjusted the seat here, but uh, I think it'll need a little adjustment. It's in a weird position. So let me just try to fix that. It should be up a front a little bit and... Okay, I think that's good. So let's hop inside. Okay, that's a good feet room, good knee room. Now, they it's a bit tall, I'm gonna see if I can adjust. But still, if it went a little bit lower, I would have okay room and uh, I would fit. So, uh, view of the back, we have leather Alcantara leather again uh, this is also padded and covered by leather although there's a molding for your knees have a nice and big net here here we have uh, air vents heated seats and I believe maybe touch AC controls now there's a 12 volt outlet there and two USB C's they're illuminated look like A but they're C there's a little pocket right there as well now, uh, transmission total is almost non-existent. I think it's the same in the hybrid, so they really did a good solution there. Seats are really well profiled. This one's wide and, and eh, soft. You can squeeze a third person. Now, let's show you the armrest. We have a good armrest, adjustable cup holders. This is all rubberized. You can put your phone here or tablet. This is not openable, maybe well, room for improvement in the future. View at the back. So again, you can use this space for something practical. And well, in this case, uh, this is the height, but because of the panel roof uh, and the roller here, which is electronic, you have a little bit less headspace. You can see the big windows and black roof liner. Now, all four sides have slowly closing handles. We have hooks on the B pillar there. And these are touch lights. Uh, I'm not sure if uh, on the hybrid they were pressable and have a different because of the no roof, but uh, yeah, that's that. Uh, seat belt is not height adjustable, but you can see the speaker on this one looks quite fancy. And then uh, see that on the other one. And we have here ambient lights, so uh, great looking. Now let's hear the closing sound. Uh, great closing sound, all of the panel roof is open. You can see that one as well. Now, let me see if I can close it up. Okay. Let's hear the closing sound. Well, not, not a closing sound, but the soundproof. I can hear a little bit, but it's a good soundproof. Um, headspace, so yeah. Uh, if you want to have the panel roof, you'll have uh, less headroom in general but you know i'm touching but otherwise i think in the hybrid there was loads of headspace for a tall person so uh do you think about that one uh, if you have tall family members or tall kids maybe don't spec the panel roof uh these always tend to leak after a lot of times so my advice would be not getting one So touch to unlock, press to lock, and here you can pop the physical uh, key cylinder is behind this plastic piece. Great opening and closing sound. Now there is a blind spot warning, I just didn't notice it. It's a little dot here, as you can see right there. So, and a close up on the color here, it looks beautiful. Uh, front doors open nice and wide. Now, what I've noticed in the hybrid here and in this one, you have this textile here but it's softly padded and I really like it in this one you have the Alcantara with white contrast stitching this is soft as well same as on the back and then here hard plastic now this one has a different finish if I'm not mistaken so speaker here and on the top now I noticed there's these are focal speakers that's why they're a little bit more transparent you can see it better now this is really interesting, they decided to put air vents here, so interesting design choice. Again, this is nice and smooth carbon fiber. Big handles, now here you can control the side mirrors, fold them and uh, control the heads up display. All power windows, you can lock the rear and no piano black, excellent. Big pockets, so I really 
like the new Van Lind and what Stellantis Group did on this one. So here you can see the tire pressure. Now uh, let's check out here now. We have the standard pedals. Here we have a rubber mat and there's a lot of space here. There's a full outlet there I won't be able to reach later. So just to show you that, uh, here we have a button to open or close the tailgate from the driver position. And now checking the driver's seat. This one's fully electric. The other one was manual. So up, uh, up and wait, up and down for the knee area, up and down for the whole seat, and then back and forward. Now there's a tilt, and you have two memory positions. Uh, I'm not sure if it has uh, massage options. I believe this one should have, and you have here a lumbar. Now we have manual extension here for the knee area. Again, same leather perforated in the middle. The seats are comfortable. The bolsters are big here, but they're kind of wide. Look at the cushion. It's really nice. And there's a per perforation here. So in the summer, it shouldn't be too hot on this uh, seats. And we have Alcantara big headrest there. You can press here to control, ooh, even the depth and the height yeah view at the top and steering column is manual adjusted there so let's jump inside so sorry it's a little bit noisy they're like prepping for press conferences so it's a little bit busy here now hmm, this one feels a little bit taller someone really uh played with this steering column so wait it doesn't go Oh, it does go in, so let me just fix it inside. Okay, uh, there we go. Let's switch to our lens. Now, this is the point of view, although someone locked the steering column, but uh, you can see how it looks. And I've set it in the hybrid. It's a little bit busy with the uh, dash details, but I do like the layout. Now, checking the steering, well, we have a smooth leather perforation on the side and the bottom part on the inside is the smooth we have contrast stitching three spoke flat bottom kind of also flat top now i like the new batch but i've said it personally i'm not a huge fan of this design of the steering wheel but hey you can have it all uh you know the cruise control settings uh the volume radio station settings so this is part of the Stellantis group we saw in Peugeot, Citroën and so on. Now here you have the paddles. I, I'm going to assume these are for recuperation. Now nothing else could be uh, for that. And here you have the wiper controls, uh, light controls. This one's for the uh, computer here. And um, before we come to the cockpit, I'm just going to continue on. So here you can see the details. There's ambient lights in this plexiglass. You can change colors. Again, nice, smooth carbon fiber. I've set it in the hybrid. I'm not a huge fan of a carbon fiber. This one really looks nice. Uh, heads up display is currently off in this one. I showed it in the hybrid, so do check that video as well. So we have different colors here. Uh, now, I haven't checked. This is softly padded, but this is hard plastic. Uh, this is also covered by textile padded. You can see those ambient lights now these match you can change these uh the exterior color now we have a touch button here for the home or here okay i think this should be home but um didn't go there anyways uh we have interesting we have air vent here and then we have one in the middle right here so we have the lock unlock button hazards so you can see the hazards in the mirrors. That's also nice and practical. You have the start stop here. It doesn't say start stop engine, just start stop. And okay, this is open, but it's supposed to be closed. You can see how this looks. So this is this is hard, but this is covered by textile. Looks really nice. And then you just push here, and then there's like at the very end, it just like drops slightly and locks into position. You can see here two USB Cs for media and fast charging. So there's a little. A light here this is all a nice flint inside and here's your wireless charger now this piece here i thought there was an ambient light here it might be but yeah the camera won't focus um and i think it's 
actually inside this plexiglass so it's kind of spreading through it because when I come close this is now black when I come close it just kind of reflects the light and you can see here on the edge of this cloth as well so I believe it's inside or on the edge of the plexiglass at the bottom now uh, I love this design and here you can put your smartphone um, also appreciate the fact there's no piano black we have Park reverse neutral drive. Interesting, there is no B for recuperation, so I guess you have to use the paddles on Opel. Driving modes, which I haven't shown in the other one, Eco, uh, Normal, and Sport. I'll have to cut those in uh, in the hybrid. Not to forget electronic parking brake, and I sincerely hope, because there's no uh, auto hold, that they have one pedal driving. Not really sure about that. I think you have to control the recuperation with the paddles and then set it to max if you want something close to that. Uh, this is nice. You can uh, adjust the cup size. There's a rubber mat, but you can also individually move these. So you can put like a smartphone between here or just adjust the cups, whatever you like. Nice and practical design. Here you press this one. So uh, you have a, a very spacious glove compartment, but let me show you here. This is nicely padded and soft. Opens like that. You have a pen holder, business cards. You have this little cubby, maybe for a change, it's rubberized. And then here, this is also rubberized. Look at the space. You have a light, and here you can see there's a AC vent. So there's a little wheel you turn to open or close the AC vent, then you can cool your drinks. You can actually store at least two water bottles here, even more probably. So you can of course uh, move this one uh, back or forward, however you like. But it, it is really great. Um, I'm liking some of these features. Uh, there is a stamp here, so again, probably uh, vegan leather. Now, I haven't checked these. These should go up and down, but I saw the driver maybe has only the the in and out, so interesting. These are really big. I don't think I've uh, seen such a big headrest. Now the seats, uh, these are quite comfortable. The, the bolsters are more, more huggish, I guess, uh, than the other one. Interesting. Uh, glove compartment is nice, slowly opening. You get this Opal, same as uh, on the Peugeot now, and Citroen fancy in the book. And you have flint here, so this is for the front airbag. You have a light. Um, okay, so you get the reflective vests here in Switzerland. They have those uh, documents and manuals, and then in Swiss they have this. This is actually quite useful. You actually put when you're gonna leave or how long are you gonna be on the parking lot. Um, so yeah, that is something practical. Not sure what you don't use that in Croatia. Um, it's like to let others when you're gonna leave. So view at the back, and uh, headroom of course. Now let me see if I can go a little bit lower. Yes, I can. Okay, that is the lowest position. I can go a little bit forward. I don't have to be this low, but I could go a little bit up. Good room. Headroom is okay. Always on the front. Now look at the my view i can see the hood and look at this it's connected and extending right there so that's a cool detail now on the top we have a baseless mirror auto dimming we have here passenger earring information uh and here we have emergency call road assistance we have touch lights so uh, the other one i believe was uh physical buttons uh we have the shade so you can see that um there that closes or opens Huh, I've noticed now that these are also ambient colors. I wasn't quite sure, but now I'm sure. Uh, you saw this one for opening the roof. And look at this. This is like a nice spongy material uh, room for your glasses. Who says you can have a pen roof in a uh, glasses compartment? Volkswagen Group. Huh? Okay, uh, that's that. Documents holder, beauty mirror, interior lights match. Well, this is nice and cold. And here, that's not covered completely, but it's uh, almost there. Now, 
back to the digital cockpit. So this is the home screen. We have your um, battery set of charges. This is the front wheel drive. So you can see here the range at 91% 477 kilometers. So I guess you will get 500 maybe on a full 100% charge. If you press here, you can see the um, power consumption. Quite thirsty, but it's just probably it was driven for 145 kilometers. Hmm, very thirsty. Yeah, we're gonna see that when we get it on test, maybe. So only three. Um, I guess you can switch these. Um, okay. Um, yeah, only three screens here. So this is like the main screen. Now uh, to the main screen, we have here AC controls on the side now. I then show you this one. We have the car shortcut, home and AC. So you can see here, uh, I haven't switched this one to, um, let me just do that real quickly to English. Actually, this one's a bit different, but uh, go to the apps, go to the wrench settings, system, and instead of Deutsch, we go to English. We're in Europe, so I'm just gonna put UK. Um, okay, so back to the home screen. That's the home screen, we have the navigation. You can go here full screen. Now, this is nice and fast, look at this. The, the, they finally managed to do it right after all these years. Uh, here we have the charging stations near you, so that is great. Um, back to home menu. The screen is also nice and fast, nice and fluid. You have the app driver here. Mm, now here is the energy. Here you can see again uh, on the big display the front wheel drive and the battery. You can see here history. So 500 kilometers, 100 kilometers and mm -hmm. usage. Uh, when you're driving you see which is using the most power you can set up here the 80 percent or that you can schedule the charge uh, overnight when there's cheaper tariff you have front heated seats and heated steering wheel you have massage options here as well Okay, I guess this is a shortcut. On the other one, we had climate uh, there. Let me just, oh, now it's on maybe. So now we have it on the sides. So you have here max uh, or minimum, automatic, close air circulation, front, a max blow, rear defrost, front defrost, and then here for the fan and the uh, driver passenger. Volume, press to mute. And that's that. This is really a huge upgrade. I gotta say, I really like the new Renland. So, a lot of uh, interesting details in this baby. Uh, let's pull twice to show you the electric motor on the front and wrap it up. Uh, I haven't changed the ambient colors, but you can change them on the plexiglass pieces and on the roof. Um, yeah, you just push this one up. Now, here's the big cover for the electric motor, and the blue thing here is your washer fluid. So, let's let it drop. That was the new Grandland um, EV. Um, I gotta say, I like it. Uh, let me just turn on the headlights, and then we're gonna check out the spec sheet. So, lights on. And hazards on so as I've mentioned we have small hazard lights on the back you can see them here now we can see here the uh, turn signals on the top of the daytime running lights and you can see the LED headlights, so I believe these are matrix because they're labeled pixel lights, which Peugeot also uses, so these are supposed to be matrix. 
if I remember from one of the press conferences on Peugeot I was attending. Uh, 213 horsepower, 21 kilowatts whew, uh, average VLTP. That's quite thirsty for an EV. Although it's a really great interior and everything, so that's a little bit of shame. I, I, just Model Y would get 16 average, so that's, you, you would get this on a highway in a Tesla. I'm just saying because I have a Tesla. Um, and I did test a lot of EVs, so a three phase charging 11 kilowatts. That doesn't say here max for the DC. Um, so. 16-inch uh, wireless projection on navigation. Lux HD headlights, LED ambient lights, seven colors. Pixel box and wireless charger. Automatic climate, metallic impact copper. That's the name of the color. And opal visor in 3D something something. Uh, Techpack GS. 360 camera, comfort package, GS, 20 inch diamond cut alloys, and this is the lease price here in Switzerland. They have Swiss francs, um, and that's the price. That's the uh, discount on the car show, and that's the full price there. So, ladies and gents, that was the new Opel Grandland EV or the electric. I gotta say, I like it uh, if you wanna see the hybrid in the background there. Uh, do check it out, separate video. Subscribe to the channel and click the bell to get notified when I upload more videos from Zurich Auto Show. Thank you for watching, see you in the next one, bye.